What's going on everybody and welcome to another Python and Pandas tutorial video. In this video what we're going to be doing is showing how to remove outliers with pandas. Okay, so the removal of outliers is kind of a sticky situation. Okay, so if you just have outliers that you don't like about your data set, you can't remove those. Okay, so outliers are a part of a data set in many circumstances. So you don't want to just remove anything that is an outlier. Okay, so that's bad use of data. But in some cases, you have literally bad data that has outliers that are there because of some sort of glitch or whatever. And so if it's your data, you might want to fix that glitch that's causing the outliers. If it's not your data, then you must fix the glitch yourself after the fact. So the question is, what can we do to remove outliers in a situation where the removal of an outlier is actually warranted? Because again, just because you don't like the fact that that outlier is there does not mean you can just remove the outlier, okay? So I'm not trying to condone any, uh, any bad practice here. My uh, idea here is just to show you guys if you have a, le you know, a legitimate need to remove outliers, how to do it. So if you're not watching this video, I imagine this is kind of a common question people ask. So if you're not watching this video as a part of the entire series, um, copy my import statements up here and style if you're using style. If you're not using style, just co just don't copy the from matplotlib import style and don't copy this. As far as the function here, you don't need to copy that. We aren't gonna be using that right now. And so let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna make our own little function here entirely. Now also, this is the data set here. Um, I gave a download of the stocks, uh, the sentiment analysis from my website. Uh, so if you want to use the exact same data that we're using, you can download that. I'll put the link to that in the description. Uh, otherwise, uh, you can use your own data set entirely. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to make a new uh, function here. And I guess we'll just call it for now, define outlier underscore fixing. And we're going to say uh, stock name. And we could, let's say, I guess what we can do, we could put the MAs in here, but maybe for now we'll just leave that blank. Um, we'll just have stock name in here. So now we're going to define the data set. And since we've already typed it out here, I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste that same data stuff. So that's good. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to also copy this part as well. So if you're not coming from the previous tutorial, I guess pause it and type all of this out. This is just the, the files name, the index column, and then yes, we want to parse dates. Uh, this just makes sure that, because this file has a bunch of different companies in it, so this line is here to, oops, this line is here to um, only plot or only deal with a stock, specific stock that we're interested in. Now, <clears throat> the next line, um, I guess the first thing we could do is we could just go ahead and plot this data. So we could just do uh, ax1 equals plt.subplot, and we can make this a one by one by one. And what do we want to plot? Well, let's just plot the close of whatever we're plotting. So we'll say df uh, close dot plot. And we'll just give this a label of price. So what we're going to see here is uh, that we have a problem because, um, let's see, outlier fixing stock name. Uh, we're going to do BDC USD. So my Bitcoin price is I pull from an API, and sometimes this API gives me very bad data. And so there's really no way for me to know that this data is bad when I get it. We don't know, did the price change this much, or is it bad data? And anybody who knows anything about Bitcoin we know that Bitcoin is highly volatile, so this is really a challenging scenario. So anyway, let's go ahead and we're gonna plot this. The other thing we need to do is let's go ahead and do um, plt.legend, and we need to do plt.show, otherwise that's not gonna show up for us. And that should be it, so let's go ahead and run that. Uh, and eventually we'll, we'll see that we have uh, kind of poor price. I'm, I'm just making sure I commented that other thing out, yeah. Um, so we should see that we have a lot of bad data in this data set whenever this plot finally does show up. Um, and so what we can do to get around this is we can use standard deviation as a method for detecting bad plots. Okay, so here is our chart. Right. <clears throat> so as you could see with this, 
uh, we have quite a bit of what looks to be bad data. Okay, so we've got these massive fluctuations, like you know, here and here, and uh, all of these are quite poor. Um, we can clearly see with our eyeball that you know this the upper bound price is right, and it looks like we've got a lot of drops here that are bad data. Um, we've also got some misses here, like this one. There's just no data in a couple of spots, uh, and that's going to be you know pretty normal. That data is not bad data; it's just we're missing data there. But as far as these massive you know plummets down and then right back up again, those are bad data. But then we have also good data where it plummets down. For example. Um, right here where it plummets from 800 to almost about 700 within a really short time frame that's a fast jump or fall down and so we don't want to uh, pick up that as bad we just want to pick up these these momentary lapses here where if we zoom in we can see it's just like a one bar down and it goes back up so we're gonna use standard deviation to solve this problem for us so how do we do that? Well, it just so happens that standard deviation, luckily for us, is actually built in. If you wanted to do standard deviation yourself, I believe I actually have a tutorial on doing that completely on your own. But for now, we'll use built-in standard deviation with pandas. So what we're going to do is underneath where we define DF, we're also going to uh, define standard deviation. Now, the general um, shorthand way to define standard deviation is STD. Um, so we'll call it STD, I suppose, no jokes. PD dot rolling underscore STD. Um, so even they do it too. So here, we're gonna take a rolling standard deviation, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna reference kind of like you would do with a moving average, right? You're referencing a, you know, out of the previous few plots, what's the deviation here? So uh, we're gonna say, what is the data set that we wanna use to perform this STD operation? Well, we're gonna use uh, the uh, DF and uh, close, since that's what we're plotting and we can see it clearly has problems. Then uh, for rolling uh, standard deviation we can use six and then we can also say min periods and here we can just say like any form of minimum periods that we want to consider and in our case um, we can do I would say just one really that probably um, will solve it. And also, maybe for standard deviation, instead of six, that might be a poor idea because six um, might get us in trouble when we do actually have real drops. So let's do like 25. That's probably a better idea. So we'll use 25, and then what we can do is let's just plot uh, another example or a plot another chart basically below it. So instead of a, a one by one, let's make it a two by one. So that'll be a chart on top and a chart on bottom. So axis one will be a two by one and then we'll plot that, put up a legend, and then we're gonna say ax2 equals plt.subplot. This will be a two by one, only this will be chart number two, so on the bottom. And then also we wanna share x, ax1. So that just shares the axes, so when we zoom in and stuff, uh, we re retain that, um, the same you know time frame basically. Um, so now what we want to do is we've defined STD, so now we can just plot up our STD. So std.plot, label, and we'll just call this uh, deviation. And again, let's plot, we have to say plt.legend here. And plot.show, that should be good enough for us. Yes. So we'll plot this up, and while we're waiting, I'll go ahead and talk about what we're going to do next. So here we'll be able to actually visually see um, the standard deviation. And what we're hoping for is when we have a faulty price, the standard deviation should jump very significantly. So with a you know, standard deviation of 25, it's probably going to put our deviation up, you know, I don't know, because we're, dro we're dropping basically $200 almost worth of stock price. Oh, here's our chart. Um, right. So we can see here, um, we can see here that we have, like here, the standard deviation went up to, what looks to be, my mic's in the way of reading this value, 33, okay, about. And some of these are probably bad data. We could zoom in and probably find out for sure. Right, this one's a legitimate one, but this one's actually a, probably a bad one, which is interesting because <laughs> this one here is legit actually and this is the bad one and we can see our standard deviation is not um, not a fan 
but or doesn't pick it up necessarily but we can come over here and here's some prices here and we can see clearly that um, our standard deviation says you know these legit 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 bad 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 you know right and it's picking up everything that is wrong so uh, we can kind of foresee a little bit of a problem here just because um, we might actually pick up some legit plots uh, especially here where we've got that major crash and then here there's another crash so this looks like a bad one um, but the rest of the prices appear to be legit so in this scenario it would pick up this plot and this plot and then be right back on track to pay finding uh, the regular ones or the ones that were a problem so what can we do um, about this well we can zoom out and we can see that we can kind of estimate that anything let me move this over a little bit um, we can say anything that is higher than a standard deviation of you know at least 40 but some of these are legit down here um, probably here say this is like 22 so we could start with anything with a standard deviation higher than say 20 is bad data okay and then these ones are just kind of these last few ones are kind of bad but um, that's okay um, so anything with a standard deviation let's say a higher of 20 we want to ignore or get rid of okay so what we can do is we come back over to our outlier uh, fixing scenario and if you look, see like right here where we've defined uh, DF equals, you know, the lower stock name, we can do the same thing with standard deviation. So how do we do that? So what we've got is once we've defined standard deviation, we know, well, first of all, what do we have to do? We have to give standard deviation a column here because right now standard deviation does not have a column. So what we could say, though, instead of STD equals, what we can say here instead is DF STD like this so now we've assigned a whole column to STDs and what we can do I said no Joe's I'm sorry what we can do is we can say now um, DF equals DF where DF STD is less than and let's try 20 for now that might be a little too large but I think we can get away with 20 and so now I've got now I've got that. So let's go ahead and save this, and we can plot it up. And let's see what we have now. Most of, well, at least we know most of these will be fixed by just doing this. So we should fix most of them. But we might have a few stragglers. But we definitely there's a kind of fine line you want to toe because some you don't want to get rid of too much good data, but you definitely don't want these outliers, especially for something like stock, you know, back testing or something like this, where. You know, the price didn't actually drop that much. Uh, hold on, let's see, what did we do here? Ah, yes, we took away um, <laughs> its uh, straight definition, darn. Uh, so here, so what we did is we just saved ourselves another line, and we, so we said uh, we defined a new column. So there's no longer anything called STD. So copy this and replace that there. Matplotlib's probably going to get very angry with me in a moment, so you'll see some errors. Uh, where are they? Usually they pop up if you start to plot something and then you <clears throat> don't plot it. Anyway, there they are. One more. There we go. Okay, anyways, um, so you definitely don't want to have the bad data there and you don't want to get rid of too much of the good data. Uh, at least in my opinion, you want to get rid of all those bad data, especially when it, we're talking about a, you know, a price drop of about 30% and then a price rise of about 50, you know, 100% actually. Um, or rather, actually, it's 50% back up. So it drops down to about 400, goes back up to 600, let's say. Uh, so here we can see that now we don't include any standard deviation that is greater than 20, right? So all of them max out at 20. That's good. Um, and now we can look at our price chart here, and our price chart looks much better. This is a legitimate price chart, barring possibly this drop here. I forget. I think we looked at that one already, though. Right. So this price drop is definitely almost suspect. As we can see, it is right on the line of that. So we could, let's see, is there anybody else that's right on the line? So we got another one that's right on the line here. And that looks like it could be a bad one as well. Hold on, let's zoom in uh, or do this one more time. Hmm. This one's hard. Uh, this one it looks to me to be more legit. Like as long as it doesn't, it gradually goes there. That's one thing. But it, when it drops like immediately there, uh, you know it's bad. So this one's close. So would you want to get rid of that plot? Maybe. 
and that let's see that was this one here um, but this one for example we kind of want to get rid of this one okay so so it's kind of challenging because let's see that one was really close to a 20 and this one which appears to me to be a legitimate drop in recovery they're both really close uh, to the line so I guess I probably I probably won't touch those um, you can decide what you want to do with your specific data a lot of times you won't find yourself in a scenario um, because like Bitcoin is just historically very volatile, so we have a lot of high volatility moments, and it depends how bad your data is. Um, so we had a, a pretty large example of you know massive drops, but Bitcoin also has legitimate massive drops. So that was kind of it's kind of a hard scenario to use, but anyway, this is just a example of how you can get rid of outlying plots using standard deviation. Um, so anyways, uh, that's going to conclude this video. Also, just uh, as a quick note, if you wanted to actually just eradicate it from your data set, what you can do is after you've done this, you could save to the CSV. So you would use pandas, you know, save or two underscore CSV, and you could resave the data, and you could knock off the standard deviation column before you did that, and you would fix the data set. So that way, every time you went through the data set, you wouldn't have to calculate that standard deviation. Um, and then calculate less than 20 and all that. So if you're going to continually find yourself doing this, you should just knock it off immediately. Um, so anyways, uh, that's going to conclude this video on how to fix outliers. Again, don't remove outliers just because you're not happy that they're there. Just remove outliers if it's literally bad data like it was in this scenario. So anyways, that's it. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those in the comment section below. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.